Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. A true heart. I personally love that statement. I just love it. A true heart, wholehearted, sincere. I love those thoughts. Oh, how I pursue this in my relationship with my Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus, to form in me daily and to continuously uphold in me the heart of our Lord Jesus, a true heart, a true heart. How I love to have, be upright and honest and sincere. How I hate deceptive thoughts. I don't want to know them. I don't want to be conscious of them. I don't want to have any motivations in my heart that aren't honest and upright and true that I would be ashamed of, that I would hide in the secrets of my motives. God forbid that I would still be at such a place. Sure, I've suffered those things like any sinning heart. We all have sinned. Our hearts have all been deceitful and corrupt, as Jeremiah says in chapter 17. But thank the Lord when you trust in Him, He begins to nourish your inward life with His holy, heavenly life, and He begins to transform you and conform you to Himself by giving you His heart, His mind, His thoughts, His ways. And friends, the most beautiful thing you can have is a true heart. A true heart towards God and a true heart towards all men. Oh, how God loves those who are upright and honest and wholehearted and sincere before Him and before all men who hate corruption and deceit. Jesus was anointed, Hebrews 1 verse 8, more because He hated lawlessness and loved righteousness, loved what's true and good and pure in God's sight. And God wants to increase the anointing in our lives by perfecting our hearts. And so let's read the scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near. God invites you to come to Him, and He shows you how you can come to Him. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Dear friends, what creates or causes all the trouble in our lives is when our hearts aren't right. The circumstances are subject to the powers that live in us. If we live by the powers of a holy heavenly life, everything around us becomes subject to that. But if our hearts aren't true, everything around us is affected by that. And here in Mark chapter 7, Jesus shows you this by saying in Mark 7 verse 20, And he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, that's the word pornography, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. Thirteen vices. Foolishness is not always maybe recognized as a corrupting force of the heart. Foolish, foolish behavior, foolish responding, foolish joking, foolish reasonings, just empty, futile silliness. And we sometimes consider that funny, but they corrupt us and they affect everything around us. They encourage insincerity and distrust. And folks, he starts out with evil thoughts. <laughs> our thought life. We need to guard our reasonings, our thinking. David would say in Psalm 19, let the reasonings or the thoughts of my heart be well pleasing to you, Father. I think it's so important that we don't just allow any thoughts. You can take captive every thought, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and bring it into the obedience of God and stop any thoughts that oppose 
what is good and right in God's sight. You could stop them. You could say, no, I will not think this. And you take a scripture to heart and meditate on that scripture and shut those thoughts down. If you keep shutting them down by the word of God, not just anyway, but by the word of God, the, con pow the word of God will then take those thoughts captive and break the power over your consciousness and eliminate them. You really can start possessing those strongholds of mindsets within yourself and say, no, no, I will not serve you anymore. No, I will not reason like this anymore. And then come up with scriptures come up with scriptures if you have because the next things he said is adulteries fornications adulteries means that you're not true in your spirit in your heart to the one that you're one with that you're joined to fornications means that you imagine immorality and you and you you entertain it with things you think about watch listen to and you allow that to come into your being you welcome it in is Fornication is welcoming in sexual encounters of the imaginations and it is wholly destructive. Holy as in W-H-O-L-Y. Holy. It destroys you inwardly. It is so corruptive when you allow your innermost being to be blemished and to be darkened and to be completely become unclean and unholy. And you allow those forces in by meditating on them, by pursuing them, by looking. You say, well, how can I get rid of it when I am defiled, Pastor? It calls in me, it pulls in me, so I know it lives in me. First, you have to come to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I've allowed sin to come in me. James chapter 1 talks about this, how when desire has conceived, it brings forth sin inside of us and sin begins to produce in us spiritual death. It begins to kill what spiritually connects with God. A love for the word, a love for prayer, a love for holy communication with those who are in the Lord, a love for the house of God and church and worship. It begins to kill those desires because it becomes destroyed. So you got to come to God and say, God, I have sinned. Forgive me. And if you confess 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, your sin unto God, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So you got to make things right with God by confessing it. Father, I've allowed myself to be defiled. I've allowed myself to have these thoughts and feelings and I repent. You have to turn away. There is no freedom without repentance. You've got to choose no more. I will not serve it. It's unholy. It's unclean. It's, it's destroying me. It's destroying my life around me, my relationships, and the way I look at people. I, I can't bear this anymore. I want to be cleansed. I want to be set free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. The Bible says we are saved by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit whom the Father gives to us generously through Jesus, Titus chapter 3. So you got to confess it and then receive the cleansing flood of the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit to liberate you and begin to meditate on scriptures. You got to meditate. He who loved us and cleansed us in his own blood, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. You got to begin to meditate, Lord, I know you love me and I thank you for cleansing me with your blood. I thank you, Lord, for sprinkling my heart right there in Hebrews 10, 22 from an evil conscience. I don't want to be conscious of these thoughts anymore. No more, Lord. And you begin to come to God with a true heart. And it's the coming where the cleansing also is working. You keep coming. And as you come, the Word of God brings these thoughts to bear, these inclinations, motivations to bear. And as these inclinations begin to become, you become aware of them in the presence of drawing near of the Lord, you are praying these scriptures and the cleansing flood of the blood begins to work. And like David, he says, Lord, I know 
what you want from me. You want honesty of heart, uprightness, sincerity of heart. You want me to have a true heart, he says in Psalm 51 verse 7. You want me to embrace the wisdom of acknowledging what's wrong and what's right and to choose what's right. So cleanse me with his Lord. Wash me, cleanse me, heal me from these evil thoughts is what that really means. Cleanse me with his, if you'll find it, Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart. Friends, we need the loving Father as we draw near to him to so cleanse us and cleanse us that we become more and more aware of him than we do of self and sin and all of its uncleanness and unholiness. And the Lord says to you and me from Ezekiel, let me read you this verse, I love it. In chapter 18, verse 31, cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, O house of Israel? Ezekiel 18, verse 31. I really believe <clears throat> when you come to God and keep coming, and keep coming and keep bowing and keep bowing and say, Father, create in me a clean heart. Oh, Father, wash me, wash me, Father. I repent, I acknowledge these thoughts in my heart. They're unclean, they're unholy, they're corrupt, they're vile. And I repent before you and I ask you, forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. First John chapter one, verse six and seven. And you keep coming and you keep drawing near with a true heart. A true heart will be the divine holy exchange you will experience in drawing near where the corrupt heart is washed by the blood and the cleansing heart, that pure heart of Christ is imparted into you and you are liberated from all that defiles you and corrupts you and the Lord will do something most wonderful for you. Let me close with these thoughts. Here in John chapter 4, there's this woman Jesus is speaking to who has been so crushed in her heart by having gone through five divorces and now is living with a man that's not her own. And Jesus says to that precious soul what he says to each and every one of us. He says to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. I love this about the Lord. He looks at you and me and says, give me a drink. What do you bring into our relationship? What do you bring into your communion with me? Are you having the river of my life giving spirit, drawing you up into that holy of holies, into that perfect rest of communion with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you bring into that communion the life of the spirit and worship in spirit and truth? What do you give me? And maybe you say, Pastor, all I give is, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, cleanse me. Oh, friends, it's not going to stay this way. If you allow him to create in you a true heart, if you allow, in him, allow him to cleanse your heart from consciousness of sin, he will open up in your own heart that fountain of his life-giving spirit that will spring up to him in eternal life because he says, whoever drinks of the water, John 4, 14, that I will give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give <clears throat> Him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. You will come into that place of prayer. Where the holy life-giving forces are just flowing through you in communion with the Father. And you live in that beautiful harmony of joy, of everlasting joy. Where Jesus says, out of your heart in John 7, 38, will flow a river of the life-giving spirit oh this he said about the holy spirit he would give out of his glorified life into each and every one of us friends drawing near to your father in the river of his love flowing from your heart will make your prayer 
a thing that you can't wait to do morning, noon, and night, and where you will continuously live in that communion and fellowship with him and then share it with everybody around you and it will affect everything and everyone and God's favor and blessings will flow from you. Amen. Have a good day.